What's up everybody, how's it going? Two months ago, we hit 100K subscribers on this YouTube channel, and I posted in my community tab that I was gonna do a Q&A just like I did at the 25K and 50K subscriber milestones. Now because I am a terrible person, I still haven't done this Q&A two months later. I have a good excuse, which is that I had been waiting for my 100K YouTube subscriber plaque, you know, the silver play button. I still haven't gotten it. I also haven't gotten my check mark, my very verified check mark next to my YouTube username. So I finally decided after two months, okay, whatever, I'll stop waiting. I'm just gonna do this Q&A. And so I apologize for the delay. I realize that now we're actually past 125K subscribers, which is just mind blowing. And I sincerely wanna thank each and every one of you for watching my videos, supporting the content. It really means a lot. If you had told me just nine months ago that this is where this YouTube channel would be today, I would have probably not believed you. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. With that, I'm gonna read through a bunch of these questions, as many as I can, and I'm gonna try to answer them. And of course, I'm gonna be putting timestamps in the description and in the comments below, so that if you wanna skip around to the questions that most interest you, you can do that. So let's start from the top, how to take care of your eyes as a pro software engineer. So all my life, I've been fortunate enough not to have any vision problems. That being said, just like everybody else, my eyes do get fatigued if I stare at a computer screen all day long, which I tend to do, and especially at night when it's dark and the screen is super bright, my eyes will start to like squint and I feel like I'm being blinded. So my one tip to you is to lower your screen brightness, especially at night, to use dark mode on websites or on your code editor or on your browser, and that'll hopefully help keep your eyes you know, not that fatigued or not that taxed, especially at night. How to get out of the programming tutorial bubble. So I feel like I've never really been in the programming tutorial bubble. And by the way, I think that what this means is that you keep watching all kinds of tutorials about programming and you feel like you're never really like committing to anything or you feel like it's just like there's too much to learn. If that's what you mean, my one piece of advice here would be to really commit to something. Explore a few areas of programming, follow a few tutorials, but then once you've found something that you're relatively interested in, commit to building out an entire project. Commit to completing 50 or 90 coding interview questions. Commit to something. That's the key, I think, to getting out of that programming tutorial bubble. And you'll see that you'll feel a lot more satisfied once you see an entire project completed end to end, or an entire thing, like a set of 50 coding interview questions, completed. You'll feel like you've accomplished something meaningful. Is JavaScript still the future and is it worth learning? I would say yes. Based on everything that I know about JavaScript, about front-end engineering, about software engineering as a whole, I don't see JavaScript going anywhere, anytime soon. I think it's one of the, if not the safest languages to learn right now if you wanna be employable, if you wanna have valuable skills. So I would say you cannot go wrong with JavaScript. Tips for people who wanna become data scientists or machine learning engineers. Unfortunately, I don't have that much experience in these two subject areas. I would say find people who do, and I'm sure that there are blogs, YouTubers, whatever out there. Find people who do have that experience and follow in their footsteps. Can we expect any tutorial videos? So I've done a couple of tutorial videos for my pathfinding and sorting visualizer projects. I don't think that I'll be doing that many more tutorial videos in the near future, mainly because I don't necessarily enjoy doing them that much and also because if I wanna do them properly and well, they take a lot of time and it's time that I simply don't have. Remember that for Algo Expert, my company, I effectively film tutorial-like videos for coding interview problems, so I already do a bunch of that for my business and doing more on top of that for YouTube just isn't really what I wanna do right now. So I may very well do a few more, but when I do them, they'll be more like exceptions rather than the rule. Do you think Macs are better for coding? Why? I wouldn't say better. I would just say that if you use a Linux machine or a Mac computer, you will have fewer hiccups along your development journey. You will have fewer issues because a lot of things related to coding are supported really well on macOS or on Linux. 
Whereas if you use Windows, you might run into a few issues and that might make it a little bit more cumbersome, a little bit more annoying for you. If I'm targeting a career in data science at Google or Facebook, should I still prepare like a software engineer? Are they gonna test me on algorithms, data structures, etc.? So first of all, I'm no expert in this. So I would take everything that I say with a grain of caution. As far as I know, candidates who are interviewing for data science or machine learning positions at Google and Facebook are gonna have one or two interviews that are just like normal software engineering interviews, algorithm problems like those on Algo Expert, but then they're gonna have a lot more interviews like three or four that are more focused on data science or on machine learning. That's how I think it was when I was at Google or when I was at Facebook, but I would certainly double check with your recruiters if you're talking to recruiters at these companies or with an actual data scientist or machine learning engineer at these companies. What is a good way to start a company as a software engineer? Identify a problem, come up with a solution for that problem, determine whether or not there's a sound business model around that solution. Like, can you make money from that solution? Is the way that you're gonna be making money sustainable? And then execute on the solution. Build an MVP, a prototype, try to get a customer, try to get two customers, try to get 10, and then grow from there. I kind of trivialized it, but at its core, that's really what it comes down to. What are Algo Expert prerequisites? We have them all in the FAQ on the website, but for Algo Expert, the coding interview product, it's really just you have to know how to code at a fundamental level. You should know some of the very, very basic data structures like what is an array and how do you use it in Python, for instance? What is a string? Just, you know, the bare minimum, not even the underlying details or things related to complexity analysis or all of that. And then you can use Algo Expert. We cover all of the material that you need in the data structures crash course and in all of the coding interview video explanations. What are the blogs or tech sources that a full stack developer should follow to keep learning and evolving with time? So that's a really good question. Unfortunately, I don't think that I can give you a great answer because I don't actually follow blogs or tech websites. I've been way too busy with Algo Expert or when I was at Google or at Facebook with my work there and Algo Expert on the side to really have time to follow a bunch of you know, tech blogs, for instance. But what I will say is that that's actually how I stayed up to date with a bunch of stuff. Just by talking to coworkers or people that I was interacting with in the software engineering world and in conversation in everyday life, I would learn about new frameworks, new things, and what have you. And similarly, watching YouTube videos, right? You watch YouTube videos from tech YouTubers, maybe even some of my videos, like my latest video about TypeScript, and you see something that kind of interests you, you go ahead and Google it, maybe you follow a tutorial or two, and boom, there you go. You're up to date with something new. How much are the Algo Expert operational costs? So Connor, I don't think that I'm gonna share too many details right now, but what I will say is that they're very low and we're very fortunate to be a very financially healthy business, especially from a costs point of view. Congratulations, you're awesome and socially skilled. How many self-help books did you read and what are they? So it's funny, I really like that question and thank you for the compliment, by the way. Um, for the past like four or five years, I would say, I have not read a single self-help book or blog or anything like that. I've been purely in execution mode, working on my company, working on myself, and just like executing. However, leading up to these past four or five years, so during my college years, I devoured self-help books, blogs, videos, you name it. I consumed so much of that stuff. And to be honest, I don't even know if off the top of my head I could give you the name of a particular book or a particular blog. However, what I will say is that one of the most helpful and kind of eye-opening uh, let's call it genres of things that I used to read a lot on and consume a lot was dating books, dating blogs, whatever you want to call it, content on dating. And believe it or not, that stuff, all the literature that I read on that topic, I think was extremely helpful, not just in dating, but 
all aspects of life, including business and just, you know, being, like, successful or trying to be the best version of yourself. Do you or have you ever struggled with mental health? What do you do to exercise your mind when you're really stressed? And also, what are your real long-term goals? Where do you see yourself in the next 10 years? So these are amazing questions. I'm gonna skip the where I see myself in 10 years just because it's just far too long of a question. Maybe I'll do another video on that. As far as the mental health, I personally have never really struggled with mental health, but someone close to me has, so I'm relatively familiar with that. But I'll share with you one thing that I do to kind of handle stress, and it's that I always remind myself whenever there is a stressful situation in my life that if something is beyond my control, there's no reason for me to stress about it. And it's something that I really do religiously. I think I'm pretty good at doing it. And in turn, not only has it just improved the quality of my life, but I also think that it's allowed me to really handle stressful situations very well in a calm way, not in an emotional way or not in a um, erratic way. And so that's something that I would recommend. If it's beyond your control, don't worry about it. Worry about how you'll react to it, not about it. Make an algorithms, data structures, course, three hours and more. We have one on Algo Expert. Hey Clement, my question is probably weird. There are no weird questions. Or maybe there are weird questions, but they tend to be the most interesting ones. I sometimes feel at my job that I'm not doing as much as I can. I feel capable, but I feel like I'm being restricted by my company. Maybe it's not super innovative. My question is, will joining Facebook or Google alleviate this feeling of boredom and give me a sort of thrill, so to speak? My answer is yes and no. At the very beginning, when you join a company like Facebook or Google, everything will be so new, so impressive, so like, incredible that you will be starry-eyed and you will just really find it exciting, more than likely. Maybe there's an exception here, but more than likely you will really find it exciting, you'll feel empowered, you'll feel like it's super new. But then, just as with everything in life, you start to fall into the routine, you start to get a little bit more complacent, things start to get a little bit easier, and you might feel like you're just a cog in the wheel or you're not really doing anything too exciting. If that starts to be the case, you have to realize that and do everything that you can to challenge yourself and get out of that rut, whether it be changing teams, whether it be picking up a new project on your existing team, whether it be changing roles, changing companies, whatever it is, you have to identify what you can do to challenge yourself and get out of that mental rut. Congratulations on 100K. Silver play button is gonna be epic. I wish I'd gotten it, but thank you so much. What should a high schooler like myself do to eventually get a job at a big tech company? I'm learning data structures and algorithms, blah, blah, blah. I don't know how to cross the gap. There's still a lot. So, okay, first of all, the fact that you are starting like as a high schooler means that you are so far ahead of the game. What I would say is just keep learning, build some cool projects, you have all the time in the world, but don't be lazy and don't delay things. Don't say, oh, I'll have all the time in the world in college. Do it now, take advantage of the fact that you're so young, start building out those cool projects, start preparing for your coding interviews, start doing those data structures and algorithm problems, get good at all these things, start contacting recruiters for internships, maybe your first or second year in college, assuming you go to college, or right after a boot camp if you go to a boot camp, and you will be ahead of the game. How did you come up with the name Algo Expert? That's a really good question, and unfortunately, I do not know the answer to that question. I typically remember everything, but I don't remember how I came up with Algo Expert. I know that when I pitched the idea to Antoine, my co-founder, I pitched it along with the name Algo Expert, so I already had the name. I think it was just that I was really into algorithms. I loved algorithms, and I just liked the, 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 the word algo or the prefix algo. And I don't know, I think I just came up with algo expert and it had a catchy ring to it, algo expert. I pitched it to him and we just didn't really think about it. We were like, yeah, let's go for this. Let's go with this name. It's a catchy name. And the rest is history. Can you please talk about the differences between the environment, like the culture of the Google NYC office where I worked and the Mountain View office or other offices? Congrats on 100K subs, blah, blah. Thank you so much, Ramayiz. So for your question, the best way that I could describe it is the Google New York City office and the Facebook New York City office, they are 
amazing offices that feel like offices. You feel like you are at work, if that makes sense, but they have these amazing perks, right? They're super nice, like interior design, really funky, really googly, if you want to call it that, with the cafeterias and everything and scooters inside. They're really amazing, but they feel like offices, and I really liked that. In contrast, the Mountain View campus at Google or the Menlo Park campus at Facebook, they really feel like Disney World. They are fantastic to visit for orientation or for a work trip once or twice a year. They're super fun, but personally, I wouldn't like to work there all the time. They're more like an attraction, like something that you want to see in your life or you want to go back to once or twice a year, but not somewhere that I would like to work at every day. And just for the record, this is really when I'm comparing it to the Google NYC office or the Facebook NYC office. Otherwise, the Menlo Park and Mountain View offices of Google and Facebook are far better than most other offices I've ever seen in my life. You are such a great guy. Well, thank you, Gigos. Can you show a graph of the trajectory of getting these 100K subscribers? It seems like yesterday that you started talking about your business here on YouTube. Sure, I'll put a graph up here. And I just wanna say that it's absolutely crazy that in just nine months, we went from basically no subscribers to 125K subscribers. Absolutely mind boggling. And so I wanna rethink all of you, especially those of you watching this video right here, that means that for whatever reason you think that what I say is interesting or enjoyable, I wanna thank you again from the bottom of my heart. One million sub is on the way, that would be insane. There's so many questions, so I can't go through all of them. I'll go through three last questions. I'll go for random ones. The first one, congrats, Clement. Question, how does one get big? Chris, what's up, Chris? I hope you're doing well. One gets big by eating big and lifting big. I bet you didn't see that one coming. What is your favorite thing about your girlfriend? The fact that she asks dumb questions on my YouTube community posts. Do you or did you have any mentors in your life? If so, what's the biggest thing that you've learned from them? I wouldn't say that I've ever had or that I currently have mentors by the standard definition of a mentor, but the two closest mentor-like figures in my life probably have been my brother, my older brother, and especially when I was younger, and my father. And as for what are things that I've learned from them, way too many to explain in this video, but I will leave you with one thing that my father's always told me that I absolutely love, which is, say like them, do like you. I'll see you in the next video.